Hello, hi guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Olua Yeti. And um, if you've been a subscriber, thank you so much for staying by. Um, on this channel, I talk about different things in the tech space, but especially more oriented to the data, data space. What do I do? Nine to five, I'm a senior data scientist and based in the UK. Um, on the side, I'm an educationist in the data, data space. So, you know, you see me talk from technical content to non-technical content and creating tutorials. Um, I also run like a WhatsApp community called for data gigs, which is to, you know, help newbie, newbies get into the data industry, either as a data analyst, scientist or engineer, and also to help people who are already in the field who have two years um, experience and above to level up. Um, for instance, at the time of recording this video, we plan to start um, a challenge tomorrow, um, which is to help us upskill ourselves in computer vision. So yeah, if you're here, um, New Year, you, now you know what we do, and I hope you do stay by and you click the subscribe button. Today, I have a special guest with me, which is Zion, as you would see her, if you can just wave to the audience. <laughs> Zion, popularly known as Z Smart, because yes, she's pretty smart, very smart. Yeah, one of the smartest people I've met. So it's indeed a pleasure to host her. And um, the topic that we're going to talk about um, in this video is quite controversial because I've seen a lot of people create content and categorize data analyst as a non-coding role. Maybe if that was said two years ago, I would agree, but um, time has changed and the skill set has also evolved for different roles. And I believe that coding skills are required for a data analyst, especially knowing some bit of Python programming. So here I have Zion who is going to introduce herself. She's a data analyst. And um, yeah, Zion, can we just get to meet you, your background, and um, just a brief of, you know, how you, 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 you found yourself as a data analyst. If it found, if you found yourself or it found you, let's, let's know. <laughs> All right. Hi, everyone. I thank you for the opportunity of sharing my story. Um, I'm Zion by name, and um, I studied computer engineering. I have um, over two years' experience in data analysis. I'm currently a data analyst with Fondor. So um, the journey into data started in 2020, where I was rounding up with my undergraduate degree, and I needed clarity as to you know the path to take. And thankfully, I met the mentor. <laughs> which is Yeti, and she guided me. So originally the plan was going to data science, which is still the plan. But along, along the way, I got interested in, into, um, got interested in data analy analysis. Uh, I got interested in data analysis and I, I ventured into it. Awesome. Thank you so much. I like that she said you are still on the path for data science. I would not even allow you to say to follow I'm still on the path. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so sure. this is not, yeah, this is not to shade anyone who have decided to settle for data <laughs> analytics, but I know how she started her journey, at least I'm private to that journey. So I know that, you know, data analytics is the starting point for her. There is more for her to do beyond yeah. that. So yeah, I'm glad to, to hear that. Yes. Thank okay. You. So um, how did you find yourself at Fondo? And what do you do at Fondo? Like, what's your day-to-day -day activity? Or, you know, what do you do from nine to five? Okay, so in Fondo, okay, starting with how I found myself in Fondo, I applied for the data analysis role, which is my second data analyst, analyst group. So I applied for the job, I got in, and basically I do reporting, I do, um, predictive analysis, I do it, in, um, I, I communicate with the growth, the growth team, the product team, operations. So I work with all, basically all the teams, including management. So I work closely with management as well. And what I do basically is finding patterns in data and telling stories in data. All right, thank you so much. Um, I know you got promoted in, correct me, 
how many months did you spend and you were promoted? Six months. Six months. So I got promoted during my confirmation period. Wow, that's that's really yeah. No, no. I, yeah. Honestly, it's a proud moment for me. Anytime I think about that, that's that's Thank really you. mind blowing. That's really yeah. mind blowing. Yeah, and I'm I'm sure that another one is on its way very soon. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, what were your skill sets? um at the time that you applied for this particular role like if you list the, the technical skills that you require in terms of maybe the the tools that you you knew the programming language that you knew before you applied for this job yeah all right so before i applied i had um knowledge of um, python power bi excel and um sql but my strongest skill set at that time was python and that was my major advantage. Wow, that was your major advantage. I'm yeah. glad to hear. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Wow. I actually, to be honest, I didn't know. Um, I, I, I had thought that, um, you know, it was Power BI and SQ and Excel so, that took you there. It was maybe when you now, I knew you were learning Python, but I didn't know that it was something that you actually you know if you get what i mean was something yeah. that you use as a card to to play forward your skills okay okay i think that brings me back to what i said before we started recording that i had someone exactly. who had gone for a boot camp without python and he was telling me that you know he he wanted to learn python now even though he has gone for a data analysis boot camp he realized that he needed to learn python to upskill himself to apply for jobs so i'm glad that you actually mentioned that um was there any skill set that you picked during like you didn't have before you know you you started this role but you had to pick up um you know during the course of the role <clears throat> i don't think there was any i just had to build up so there were some skills like power bi i was not really using them on the day to day, but since I you know started my role in Condor, I've been building dashboards literally like as as often as as possible. But I had knowledge, I had the basic knowledge before I got into the role. So most of these skills I built, I just just a continuous learning on the job. Okay, all right. So nothing has really you can't say like oh maybe because let's say I'm trying to think of some like maybe you are required to pick Azor <laughs> for instance. <laughs> no, okay, no, no, fair no. enough, fair enough. All so right. the only the only thing that would just be like an advancement or a new learning in this role is um, building models. That would be like the next phase for my job. I see. Okay. Yes. Okay, so could you talk about how Python has enhanced your efficiency um, as a data analyst? And if possible, um, you know, leaning on that question, if you could provide uh, like examples of tasks or projects where Python like played a crucial role in your analysis or in your report writing or in your decision making process. All right, thank you. So like I said earlier, you know, I mentioned that um, Python is my strongest skill set. So I yeah. literally started learning Python before I picked up other skills. So I yeah. find it easier to actually do visualization, you know, to to work around to work around tasks with Python. So whenever I'm given a task, and especially when it's not so much, I just I just pick Python as my first because most times the skill will not be the, the, the tool will not be specified all the management wants all the what your line manager and everybody needs is just for you to do the task so i will give <laughs> an, an instance of um, so there was um, a, 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 an analysis that was supposed to be done to um, the growth team so there were some complaints you no know, social media and like and we just wanted to get the reviews of our customers wanted to know okay, how they felt about our our you know our product your service and yeah. they told me oh they needed this analysis uh, yeah, exactly so they needed this analysis as quick as possible and i knew that okay with python i could do um scraping 
I could do scraping and you know for thirty minutes and so I scraped the Google app, uh, the, the Google Play Store review and did the analysis, wow. gave them the word count and it was done. It was less than an hour. I got, wow. Yes, I got wow. it out. So if if I was to do it on Power BI, I would have actually like I would have struggled a bit with it. But because I'm already familiar with Python, I know that there's something like web scraping and you know, I just I got it done in, in, in less than an hour. Wow, you deserve that promotion. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who will not promote somebody that is as efficient as that? <laughs> you know, wow, wow, that's really interesting because I'm thinking of people who are of the side of you don't need Python. And I'm trying to, I mean, this is this is not because I'm trying to, Python is open source, so they are not even paying me for saying you should learn, <laughs> you should learn Python. Nobody's paying me to say advertise Python, right? So I'm just, because I'm just curious and I'm trying to think of this, you know, I, I'm not familiar with Power BI because, you know, I'm more tilted towards the data scientist side. And if I even want to do analysis or build dashboards or whatever, I, I go with Python basically. So I'm just thinking like, can Power BI, BI do I know SQL cannot even do that because that's just a query language. But can you use Power BI to even scrape? I don't think that's possible to scrape a website. No. <laughs> no, I don't I, I don't, don't even feel, I don't even feel think the timing is very important and this is a tool that can get it done like you don't so need to fast. spend so much time on it. Yes, it's very fast. Hmm. Very fast. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, this is even a good time to say, you know, I have a video on using doing web scraping with Python. So I'll probably, you know, link it up in the description or just put it somewhere in the video because, yeah, it just came to mind. I actually did a video on um, like a, a workshop on web scraping with Python because I felt like that was something that a lot of people would need. I'm glad to just know that, you know, <laughs> that was something you had to do during the course yeah. of your work. Yeah, yeah. I, I I mean, thinking about it, I'm trying to think of an alternative to Python that would have done what you did. But honestly, I can't find. And I mean, this is this is the beautiful thing about, you know, knowing Python as a data analyst. Yeah. So my next question would be, in addition to Python, were there other, you know, programming languages or tools that you that you think a data analyst should know? Um, and if so, um, how do you, how do you think this other two um, complements um, Python, like based on your experience? So far in my experience, I've not had any reason to use any other programming languages. You know, okay. because I really don't do high level. Like, it's still just at the basis of visualizations for now. So I really don't do high level. So for now, I'm just most familiar with python okay all right okay that's fair enough because yeah when you know python you are just good <laughs> <laughs> no i love that language oh my god i, I mean, love it people may think i mean for me people may even think like maybe that's the only language i know or that's my first language no python was is my fourth programming language actually, and I'm sure even for you, even for you, I don't think Python is your first programming language, right? I don't know if I'm right. Yeah, it's not. So it's not like maybe yeah, we just came across <laughs> Python and we just no, no. Python is my fourth. I've 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 learned. Did I say fourth? Yeah, fourth actually. You know, I've learned like Java, and then I moved wow. to JavaScript heavily like i did a lot of heavy javascript and then from javascript to um uh, ruby 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 on rails as well and then python you know and it was even data science that made me because then you know i was doing software development and yeah. all that before i transitioned so that was when i did all those other languages but once i came when i started my journey to data science and i saw i said ah <laughs> They tell me. <laughs> Python is just too sweet. Ah, uh, honestly, honestly, it is is I don't know people that learn your that things. I don't. Know. I just love Python, Sha. So <laughs> I think I think let's just put it that way. So my last question will be considering like the evolving you know landscape of data analysis 
and the emergence of new tools and different technologies, are there ways that you stay updated with the latest developments in Python? That's yes. that's the other part, and then I'll ask the other parts, um, the part B of that question afterwards. Okay, so um, to stay updated, I actually um, liaise with other data analysts in communities. So I look out for what other people do. So just recently, that was on Sunday, I started a meeting with the of the top fintechs just to you know, get the updated information of the tools they use. And, and, uh, um, and I, also... I, lost you. I lost you for like 30 seconds. If you could repeat, like on Sunday, you met with someone. Yes, I met with a, a data analyst, one of the top fintechs. Oh, country. nice. So just to get an update on how the analysis is done. I just felt there was a way I could do better with my reporting. So, mm -hmm. and you know, gave some tips on how it's been done, the tools they use. And aside that, I also, you know, just that randomly read, read, just read some articles and it's okay. And then I, I had asked, also check for top data analysts on LinkedIn. I just go through right. their licenses, their certifications. You know, read through their posts just to pick one or two things that would make me relevant in the field. In the field, nice. That's that's really brilliant. I I agree with that. Like that's something that's because one of the thing with the tech space is that it's constantly evolving, and you just be that's left behind true. if you don't evolve with that. You know, with the tools yeah. and the changes required. Okay, so the part B um, of that question is: Are there specific communities that you? find particularly helpful for professional developments um in this field you are not allowed to mention for data geeks in case you have that in mind <laughs> <laughs> no don't let me my number one <laughs> so, yeah i know i find for data geeks <laughs> so i'll mention <laughs> so aside for data geeks i would mention data science nigeria then okay. uh, women in data Africa, women in data science. So mm. those are communities that would be helpful. So okay. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm more women. I'm in more women communities, but <laughs> data science Nigeria is, is for both gender. So yeah. it can be helpful. Yeah, it can be helpful. Okay. All right. So I think yeah, those are the questions that I have for you. Unless you have anything um that you want to anything else you want to say um but probably before that i just want to like highlight like for those who have stayed on to you this time like i hope you have realized that you should not allow anybody deceive you that saying uh, just learn power bi excel sql i know you may talk to few people who will say oh i'm not actually using python in my company as a, i know few people like that but at the same time, you don't want to put yourself as a, at a disadvantage, right? You want to show that you you are ready to evolve, um, you know, as skills evolve. So if the company decided decide to switch, you know, for instance, to things that like imagine the example that she gave that she needed to script data. Which other two? How will you script? You can't use Excel, you can't use Power BI or SQL. <laughs> you can't use those tools. You know, you need programming skills, which is Python. Like Python is a language for data analysis in most of the is the most um, you know, um data friendly language, if I can call it that way. So I just hope for those who are you know, planning to get into data analytics and analytics that you consider, uh, um, you know, to pick up Python. And if you already work as a data analyst, um, I think it's time to upgrade, um, you know, your skill. So if you look in the description box, like there's a roadmap, and even on my on my YouTube channel, there's a you know Python course. Um, for data analytics, so it takes you from the beginning of Python um programming languages to the different thing, the different ways that you use python for data cleaning um using pandas uh matplotlib seaborn to create like data visualization so do make sure like you check that out um because it will be very very it will come and you may not know when you will need it so um yeah that's that's just what i wanted to say so zion i don't know if you have anything else to to say or mention Yes, so I'll just say to the audience that don't ever stop learning. Mm. Don't ever stop learning. Don't ever stop upskilling. Don't mm. ever stop giving your best. 
to get the best results. Mm. All right, thank you. Yeah, I concur with that. And she's speaking to me as well. Because <laughs> I think this year, I, I'm not sure if I've picked any new this any new thing, but um, I'm I'm planning like I'm able, I hope that I'll be able to follow the computer vision, 100 days of computer vision that we're about to start. And uh, my hope is that at the end, I'll be able to keep up to the end and, you know, um, learn some new things to upskill myself all right so thank you so much for joining you. you know me this evening to share your you know expertise and um i mean uh the sky is not the limit i'm i'm praying and hoping that you know you continue to grow and then um, that very soon i'll see you transition from a data analyst to to a yeah. data scientist and maybe i'll be able to bring you back here to speak about that journey as well because i know people yeah. who want to actually transition they want to start with data analytics and then you'll transition so i'm sure that when you get there you will, will definitely bring you back here um yeah so thank you so much for your time thank you thank you yes so, <laughs> yeah, so to our audience thank you for joining us and um i just want to say make sure that you like the video um let's get the word out if you know anybody who is as who is aspiring to be a data analyst you know share this video and let them see the insight that has been you know delivered from zion and hopefully you find it helpful don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next video bye, bye. <laughs>